another phenomenal podcast for you today. Today, we got all kinds of cool stuff. We got my good friend Dave Burris and I going to be talking tackle and rods and reels a little later in the show. And uh, it's Promar Ahi USA Tuesday. We always talk about Promar Ahi products on Tuesday. But the big thing that's going on right now is the grand opening of the Bass Pro Shops in Irvine, California. And we have Brian from Promar and we have Justin Botrell, the most famous fisherman on the planet right now, both going to join us here in a few minutes. So get ready, kick back and relax. And I got a huge announcement for you guys. I want you all to share the living bejesus out of this because we're bringing Wayne Coda from CCA on the show on Friday. Friday is going to be one of the most important shows I've ever done in the history of your saltwater guide, which says a lot. Because Wayne's going to explain to us all about all the new rockfish regulations, all the closures that are coming down the pipe, and all the things we can do to get in front of it. Wayne is the pre or the uh, he's the guy, he's the boss, he's the chairman of the board over at CCACalifornia.org. He's the guy that goes to all the meetings. He's the calming voice. Well, he's joining us for his yearly presence on the podcast and he's going to explain to us all the new regs and all the new regulations or excuse me all the new regulations and all the new limits and all the new things that are coming down the pipe that we all have to know by monday which is going to be crazy because a whole bunch of stuff changed april 1st is opening day of rockfish and they changed a bunch of it but i want you all to say hi to marley he wants marley calm down you're okay. Look, look, look. You're right there. There you are. Get over in your cage. Okay. Marley just wanted to say hi to everyone. But gang, I want to make sure that we all are aware of what's going on out on the water and what they're planning on doing to us. And then uh, that tragedy that happened in Baltimore last night at 1.30 in the morning. My heart's out there for all the people that were in their cars driving on that bridge and are lost in the ocean right now. It's it's a tragic event. Luke McFadden over there on TikTok and YouTube and Instagram, he posted a, a really nice tribute to everybody this morning, and he kind of let us know what was going on. But it's a very, very, very unfortunate event. That freighter had a giant catastrophic problem, and they ended up hitting that, that uh, pylon, if you will, and took the whole bridge down. If you haven't seen it yet, you may want to go check it out. But it looks like a lot of uh, quite a few people lost their lives. So a moment for those people. And uh, we'll talk more about it as we get more information. But I just wanted to start to show off talking about those people that lost their lives on the bridge last night. And thank goodness, if you, there is a bright side, thank goodness it happened at 1.30 in the morning and not 6 o'clock this morning during rush hour. That would have really been narc because it took the whole bridge. I don't know if you've seen the videos yet. If you've gone on YouTube and looked, bridge in Baltimore, and you'll, you'll be blown away with what happened. So go check that out, everybody, after the show. But, hey, grand opening of Bass Pro Shops tomorrow night. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be absolutely incredible. They're bringing in some big name freshwater fishermen, but they have no idea about these two gentlemen. They don't really know the power of Justin Botrell and Brian from Promar. They have no idea the crowd that these two are going to draw. And then Will Berto is joining them also. And Will's a big name in the industry. So between the three of them, that saltwater section will be uh, Definitely represented, but let's bring Brian and Justin on here to talk to us about what's going on at Bass Pro Shop. Morning, Brian. Morning, Justin. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, Brian. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Justin talked about it a little bit on the show yesterday, but Brian, what's going on? What are you guys going to do over there tomorrow night? Yeah, so tomorrow is the, the grand opening of Bass Pro Shops in Irvine. Um, so pretty big deal. I mean, how many times in your life are you going to be able to see a Bass Pro Shops open, right? That's kind of like the way that my friend explained it to me, and I agree. Um, we're going to have insane deals. I can't mention them. They're really good, though, and you're going to not want to miss them. Uh, we're going to have pro staffers there. I'll be there. A couple of other employees are going to be there. We're going to be 
doing a lot of good deals, a lot of information, a lot of seminars from other speakers. It's going to be a huge event and ribbon cutting is at 6 p.m. So if you guys are getting off at five, head directly there. And that's going to be like probably the best time for you guys to, to head out. Yeah, I don't think they quite understand, Brian. I think they know a little bit, but they're on the they're on the other side of the orange curtain. This the uh, support for this shop, store is going to be absolutely incredible. The line's probably yeah. going to be like Disneyland or like it was at the PCS show. So you it's going to be huge. You, Justin, and Will, I hope you're ready. I hope you got <laughs> plenty of sleep and you're ready for this because you guys are going to be overwhelmed. It, it it's definitely going to be a lot. Actually, we've been hearing them mention the the term superstore, mega store, quite frequently, which is something we haven't heard across any of their stores. Be said, um, this 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 shop is actually very near and dear um, to them because you know the owner of Bass Pro Shops um, has a house right down the street from there. So there's there's a chance that he'll be there. You guys will get to meet him, and there's probably going to be a lot going on in that show. Uh, well, it's, it's not really a show; it's an opening of the store. But it's going to be—it's going to be a really, really big event. You know, this isn't something that happens every day, so it's going to be something you definitely don't want to miss out. Especially being in SoCal and being so close to us. Like the closest one, I think, is in Rancho to us right now, um, and that's a far drive. So, right, Justin, are you excited about being there tomorrow night? <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm actually getting there around four four thirty because for the special guests, we get to get in a little bit earlier and get to go see all the cool stuff. Maybe yeah, we get to walk around. Yeah, we get to walk around and not have to deal with the gigantic crowd. So, yeah, I'm yeah. super excited. Yeah, uh, and then there's there's actually, there's it's a five-day event, too. So it's not just tomorrow. Tomorrow's a grand opening. Tomorrow's a ribbon cutting. Tomorrow's the day that you guys are going to want to be there. But Thursday, they're giving out to the first 100 families uh, anywhere between a $10 gift card to a $500 uh, gift card. So... If you guys get in line early enough, you guys have a chance to get some nice free gear, you know, paid for by Bass Pro Shops. Wow, that's incredible. So the yeah. whole the whole thing, the, the ribbon cutting you were saying, is it 6 o'clock tomorrow night? Correct. 6 p.m. tomorrow night is going to be the ribbon cutting. Um, we'll be there a little bit earlier, and then as soon as the doors open, you guys are going to walk on through. We'll have our section. You'll be able to meet with Justin, Will, myself, a couple other people, and, and any questions, or even if you just want to chit chat and talk about fishing or, or lobster season. I mean, this season was phenomenal. You guys watched Justin um, and just share stories. We'll be there to, to do that for you guys and be there with you guys. And you can tell them all about your big halibut you caught on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll share the story, you know, of how I caught the halibut right after listening to what Justin was telling me. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird when you follow the game plans at your saltwater guide how easy it is to put together a phenomenal day. And that was a spectacular catch, and I'm glad that we were a part of it the next morning. Yeah. Or that excuse me, the morning that you caught it, the next thing you know, you're up on stage with me talking about it. That was pretty epic. That was pretty Yeah. <laughs> it was it was a crazy experience to be honest with you. I mean, that's my biggest fish to date, you know what I mean? Like I, I've been fishing for such a long time, but I never really uh, like targeted larger size fish. So that was a good experience. It was fun. And, and being able to share it with you guys and, and have you guys teach me about it was, was always a good experience too. So, so everyone knows Brian, Brian Promar, he's, he came out on my boat to film the line that has come out now, or it's not out yet, but you've all heard. Yeah. Of it. GT. Yep. Right there. All he GT for. So he came out and filmed with me and he's like, Hey, I've never caught a big hell before, before nothing legal size. And I was like, Oh, really? Interesting. Well, I'm going to have to take you. He's like, well, where do you go? So I told him where to go, what to do, so on and so on. And the morning of the show, Brian and Steve <laughs> decided to go to that spot, that exact spot, drop their lines down and they both got rewarded with gigantic halibut. Yeah. Yeah. So mine was like a 28 pounder. And then Steve got another like 15, 16 pounder shortly thereafter. Same spot exactly where you told us to go took a little bit of time we had to drift a little bit but we found them and they were there and we would have got more if we didn't have the show if we didn't have to leave early we probably would have been able to catch our limits to be honest with you we probably would have got way more oh yeah because you guys had to be back for the show we were in the middle of the pacific coast sport fishing festival <laughs> gang you don't understand steve and brian were so busy at that show but they took a couple minutes because they listened to justin and they didn't want to miss yeah. out. absolutely incredible darren 
I'm reading what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. I've been to the Rancho store. I've done seminars out at the Rancho store. What you guys have in store, I was talking to uh, the manager of the saltwater section at Bass Pro Shops, Irvine, and he's saying that it's a huge footprint in the store of saltwater. And that's when you're up to, in Orange County, gang, that's the key. I mean, I know they're bringing in Roland Martin and they're bringing in a bunch of uh, yeah. freshwater bass guys. But uh, the people that are going to be the most busiest are Brian and Justin and Will because, let's face it, Orange <coughs> County, it's salt water. It's all salt water fishing. So it's going to be incredible. And then I was talking to the manager of the store. And eventually, gang, your salt water guide will do a big, big, big event there. And we'll bring in Justin and Pablo and Al and myself, and we'll do a big, big event. What this, they're already got it covered. There's going to be plenty of people, but in a couple of months when, uh, there isn't all the hype, we're going to go in there and rock that place. We've already got it. We already got a whole thing all set up. So you, it'll be good for all of us to get together there. It's a central location. So all the people from LA and all the people from Sandy, it'll be like the PCS show at, and they'll see, the power of your saltwater guide when we all come rolling in. But I mean, they don't understand all the people that are going to be there just to see you, Justin, because they've all been looking up, looking up your nose for the last six months. <laughs> standing in line to find out how you caught 2000 plus lobsters this year. Yeah. It's going it, to be it, cool. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that they didn't, to be honest, like you hold such a big, uh, you know, foundation in saltwater, especially here in like SoCal, it's kind of crazy. It's going to be, it's going to be a huge event for sure. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I, I'm excited. Yeah. Well, we talked about it. They, they, they got so much. What's really the hard part is trying to open the store up tomorrow night. They are yeah. under pressure. Like you can't even believe. Yeah. Everyone keeps saying that your sound is off. Can anyone hear? There's a whole bunch of people saying sound not working. I where uh from who from my end db custom said it arnie said it um, huh i don't know can you guys hear us tim ogilvy test hey. test oh yeah you get here people are saying they can hear it so those of you that well we can't tell them <laughs> <laughs> those of you that can't hear it it ain't our fault <laughs> So there's going to be a lot of the um, Promar staff there. Um, all the guys and gals that work over at Promar, they're all going to be there. Um, so if you have any questions, and also Promar is going to have a ton of product. Ton. All we fully. Product. Yeah, they ordered heavy. So we're going to have a lot of items there. Uh, we do expect to sell out, to be honest with you guys. I think, especially with rockfish season coming up, I mean, that's going to be a big opener. And we do our ahi assault jigs or squirts. Um everything or bonita flies rock the rock caught flies um so they're they're stocked up on all that and it we're expecting them to sell out right um so i definitely recommend getting there early i recommend checking out on you know every day if possible they're doing giveaways and, and prizes um aside from just coming to visit us like the event itself is going to be like a really really cool event for the following five days from wednesday to sunday it's going to be a crazy time it's going to be a lot of fun it's the deals. The oh, deals, yeah. Deals. There is going to be some amazing deals for everything mm -hmm. from hunting to fishing to boating yep. to kayaking. Everything you can think of outdoors that you know best pro shop for, which is everything outdoors. <laughs> Literally I mean, everything. Everything is going to have a deal. So. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, you facebook that you can't hear are you darren are you listening on facebook are you listening and please when i ask you guys a question answer me gosh darn it <laughs> are you guys hearing us on facebook any people out there hear us on facebook are you hearing us somebody answer come on there's 57 people listening nobody's answering jason cutter said down there he could hear it on facebook okay yep Rob. okay all right good okay well then it's obviously not us it's them all right. Yeah, well, this Bass Pro Shop, I'm super excited. I talk to them very, a lot of times, and I don't think they quite understand the power of the, on the other side of the orange curtain. 
the power on the other side, the the red side of California. They're 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 in for a phenomenal grand opening. It's going to be incredible, gang. It is going to be absolutely incredible. They're going to see, and and Promar having a big footprint inside the store. Brian, are you guys going to have any of those monofilament mesh nets? So we okay, so we sold out at the PCS show, as yeah, you guys we know. Did. Um, we actually got stock in today. So it's not Ooh. live on the site yet. Um, it's gonna be live. I'm, you guys are gonna be the very first people to know about it. So um, it's 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 arriving in today. It's gonna be off of the shipping container today. I'll probably have it listed on our website by tomorrow, um, which means maybe we'll have them at the Bass Pro Shops event since it is tomorrow. Um, I'll talk to our rep who handles that account and see if they ordered any, and then see if we can have them there for you guys. Let me show you what we're talking about, gang. If you don't understand, we've been running this uh, video for a few few months now, and it's just incredible. They can't get them fast enough, gang. If you don't under <laughs> if you don't understand the power of your saltwater guide, this kind of this net kind of was just sitting in the back. No one really understood it, and then all of a sudden, Brian made yeah. this video and then i poached it from brian and did this <laughs> saying this new net that promar made you throw it down below the squid that won't float and you pull it right through the middle of that squid and look at there you go got enough squid to fish with for the day that's all i would need for a good day of sea bass fishing or yellowtail fishing you throw that thing in the water four or five more times your bait tanks full gang I made that video and Brian can tell you the rest is history. Justin and Brian totally overwhelmed. And we yeah. told, told Turner's to get everyone that they had and they did. And they sold them all out on thir Thursday, the f opening day of the show. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's crazy. Um, that video has transformed that product, uh, insanely. Uh, we already, so we got a huge order in, um, we, well, we didn't get a huge order in, but we got a good amount in, and they're already almost sold out uh, to just retailers. So you'll start finding them in the store, but if you want them from us directly online, we'll probably do a YSWG member uh, discount for you guys on that product specifically. Uh, we have a rockfish sale and stuff like that going on right now as well. Um, but for that product specific, I'll see what I could do for you guys. Because um, I know a lot of you guys have been asking me for it, especially at the show. A lot of you guys came up to me and were like, hey, when is that going to be back in stock? Where can I find it? Do you guys have any more? And we already sold out. Um, so they're back in now. We rushed the shipment and they'll be live tomorrow and I'll see what I can do for you guys. And I'll let Dave know and he can put it on whatever social and, and get you guys, uh, get those into your hands. Yeah, it's an incredible product. And then Justin did the same thing with the four inch live deception flash. Yep. Lure. Yeah. They did the same thing and they sold Think about this gang. Everybody had these live deception flash lures. And then all of a sudden, Justin made that video part of your saltwater guide about how deadly they are in those foamers of bluefin. And then Brian and Steve sold out of those on Friday. They were out. I mean, yep. we had people coming up and asking, <laughs> asking us, Hey, can we get in on the private reserve of the, we're, we're like, we don't have any, we're not a tackle <laughs> store. <laughs> all right. But, yeah. It was Bass Pro going to have the four ounce deception lures? Yes, yes, they will. So they'll have those for sure. Um, the monofilament uh, hoops, I'm not sure about. Um, but yeah, no, right after that seminar, people bombarded us with like, hey, where are they at? Can we get it? We actually ended up selling our inventory that we brought for display only twice. We had to bring them again the next day and we sold out again. Um, so those have been doing really, really well. I mean, season's coming up, right? Now's the time to get it. And, you know, these are products that have been around for a while, but I think, you know, being taught the right way through Justin and, and Dave and, and Pablo on how to properly use it, how to properly fish it, that's what's going to make it key. Um, so, you know, learning that from them is, is very beneficial. Yeah. Thank you for all the support, Brian. I mean, we really do appreciate the sponsorship yeah. with pro Mar Ahi. I mean, it's just been a, it's definitely been a, a plus for my, company and my my guides to have you guys involved with us so we want to make sure that we thank you enough for that and steve and ben thank you very much for always supporting your saltwater guide ever since kelly girl caught the giant lobster we've been kind of working with promar 
And now with Brian making these bitching videos and then me and Elliot <laughs> searching through them and picking them apart and then doing the voiceovers for some reason, Brian, I don't know, but people love to listen to my smart mouth. I don't know. why. <laughs> I don't know why either. <laughs> it's pretty strange. It's As pretty everyone strange. knows Promar is going to have another new item come out. Yes. Uh, and, and, Brian and Steve were both on my boat the other day filming that. So stay tuned, everyone. There's something very special coming out. Yeah. And and, uh, amazing. Trust me. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we're, ex we're excited to see it. We're yeah. excited to hear about it. We're excited to come see you guys at the Bass Pro Shops. But I'm going to, I know, Brian, it's your lunch hour. And I know, Justin, you got a million things to do. So I'm yeah. going to let you guys jump out of here. Brian, do you know the address of the store people are looking for it or just Google? Uh, I would Pro recommend Shop. Googling it. Just type in Bass Pro Shops Irvine. It'll be the first thing that pops up. If I'm not mistaken, it's 71 Technology Drive, Irvine, California. Yeah. Um, yeah. But don't, but yeah, okay, cool. I was like, don't take my word for it. I only saw it for like a brief second. Um, but yeah, definitely check it out. You'll see on their funny. website every little bit of information, what they're doing each day. Uh, all the prizes that they're going to be raffling off, giving away, just coming in. The deals that they're going to have are insane. The beginning of the season is going to be the perfect time to go to this opening and pick up exactly what it is that you need. All right. Real quick, Justin, would yeah. you get a bunch of these if you're going to? Do you have a bunch of these? I, I actually have, just ordered a whole bunch of those. You guys want to have I these get on? 10 of each color. You're going to need it. You're going to you <clears throat> Every Monday and Tuesday, I throw the QR code up and you can order from your saltwater guide. You get a discount. I want you all just to go to the Bass Pro Shops this weekend. And uh, don't worry about the code because you're going to save more by showing up there. The deals are going to be incredible. Go see the guys. And then if they run out of product, gang, jump back on and use the QR code. I'll throw it up there just for a second to, as you guys leave the show. Mm -hmm. So really Sorry, cool. guys. Dave, so everyone is about how to use things, right? So I'll give everyone a really great tip of how to use those rock cod squirts. The way you use them is you're going to take a strip of squid, a small strip of squid, not a giant one. You're not going to put it on like a blanket. A little tiny strip of squid, maybe a quarter inch uh, thick. Put it on there. You can hook it just one time on that hook. You're going to drop it all the way to the bottom and do not jig it. That's not a jig. All you're going to do is let it sit there at the bottom and hold your rod. And as soon as you feel that, remember, you're in deeper water. You're in 200, 300 feet. I don't like going past there. Two to 300 feet, you're going to feel the tap, 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 tap. You're not going to feel a big hit like a yellowtail or a tuna. You're going to feel tap, 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 tap. Set the hook and reel at a medium speed. Do not reel fast because it's going to twist and break off when it comes up. You're going to reel at a medium speed and reel it all the way up. There's no, You don't have to jerk it or anything like that. That's all for TV. You're just going to reel it up, okay? That's all you have to do. It's super easy, and you're going to absolutely love it, I promise you. That's a phenomenal <laughs> tip, and you get tips all day long just like that over at your Saltwater Guide. So, Brian, thank you thank very you much for jumping on here with me. Justin, thank you very much. You guys have a great day. All right. I'll Take care, guys. guys soon. Have fun at the show. I want to hear all about it on Thursday. Well, See ya. We will. Take care, guys. Bye. All right, everybody, that's going to be cool. Make sure you make it up to that Bass Pro Shops and make sure you that that product goes so fast now that they're part of your saltwater guide and we're making those videos. But I want to bring in a good friend of mine that I grew up fishing with since I was a little kid. We're going to finish the show off talking with Dave Burst. And uh, Dave's just a plethora of knowledge. Those of you that want to know anything about building rods or matching rods and reels and everything. We're going to bring Dave in right now. We're going to go keep on show going. Dave, welcome. Well, hello, David. How are you doing? I'm good, buddy. I, I'm very excited to have you with us on the show. You, If anybody wants to know where all the bodies are buried from my past, Dave Burris knows the code. He, he has been with me since we were little <laughs> kids. We started off going down and bugging my dad and all the deckhands and captains on the end of the San Clemente Pier. We used to take the OCTD bus and go fish uh, bat rays on the end of the pier at night like a couple little 
dummies. We could have fished on any sport boat we wanted, but we wanted to go fish bat rays on the end of the pier. We've done everything in this industry you can imagine in Southern California. So welcome to the show, Dave. Boy, we sure have. And then Dave has a section over on the website in our community all about wrapping rods. And Dave's a magician as far as rod wraps. You got some, you got some beautiful product behind you. There's people that are going to be throwing questions up on the side, Dave. If you see any question you want to answer and I don't see it, feel free to stop me at any time. But how did you get in? So everybody knows this is how I always do it with all my guests. How did you get into fishing? Who took you the first time? Oh, my grandmother actually took me down to the San Clemente Pier the first time. And I just started hanging out there. And boy, you know, the gentleman that was working the tackle store at the end of the pier, you know, I guess I was about six or seven years old. He was doing something on the other side of the counter that was very interesting to me. That was wrapping a fishing rod. He was doing repairs on the, the rental rods, I do believe. And uh, I started hanging out and watching him. And uh, he took me under his wing a little bit and, and, and showed me how to do it. And that kicked off. And then I met you. Oh, right around that very same time. And uh, we kicked it off. And, and uh, boy, we were into fishing around the pier and just causing mayhem down there, man. You know, catching pigeons and, and uh, going under the pier getting bait when your dad dad gets so mad at us for doing that and oh boy all kinds of good fun stuff and what dave's saying about catching the pigeons the guy that he was talking about those wrapping the rods him and his wife bren and bob hart ran the little tackle shop on the end of the san clemente pier it's yeah. also they took care of all the rental rods for my father and they had a giant 55 gallon can of bird seed and you could buy a little bag for 10 cents of the bird seed. But Bob Hart loved me and Dave. And we would, he'd just give us a handful. And you, if you held your hand steady and didn't move it, you'd have a hundred of these pigeons eating out of your hand. And if you just went real slow with your other hand, you could get, I was kind of, the only reason we fed them was to catch them. We didn't feed them because we wanted to feed them. We wanted to catch them. <laughs> and uh, remember we fished with, uh, drop lines gang we didn't have fishing poles there wasn't we had drop lines the little green dacron wrapped around the little piece of plastic and you use the yellow plus use one of those uh four flies we called them with red yellow and green yarn and you could drop it over the side of the pier and catch all kinds of stuff we catch everything bass sheephead schmelt mackerel little bonita it was just a fun time to grow up, right? What a different world it was back then. It was an amazing time. It was, I mean, you can't even, there's nothing in today's world that it was like the time when we grew up. They just, it, it, it's all gone now. Right. And that's why we talk about so much, gang, how important it is. Dave Burris and Dave Hansen's lives were changed dramatically because of fishing. Now, can I say it kept me out of, kept the two of us out of trouble? No, but, yeah. but we, were always we could have trouble. been in way worse trouble, but we were in trouble in the, on the pier. We were in trouble out on the water fishing. What a great place to be in trouble. But I want you to all to understand how important it is to look around your grandkids, your uh, nieces, your nephews, anybody. If you have a desire to take them, fishing you're going to change their life you're going to absolutely change their life and it is super important to get involved with cca and try to keep our rights open for fishing i don't know if you guys saw the jim hendrix just put out a article about the rockfish closure and they took our reds from four to two now and uh, we got wayne coda from cca the chairman of the board for CCA California.org. He's coming on the show on Friday to kind of help explain all these closures. So I wish I need you all to do me a massive favor and share this show and let people know that Wayne's coming on the show and he's going to explain everything to us and all the things that are going on 
in the industry to close fishing. You will be blown away when you start to listen to Wayne and he'll start to tell you about all the different things that are going on to close fishing. And I can't imagine if Dave Burris and I didn't fish when we were little kids, we would have never met each other. We wouldn't have had this love affair with each other for 50 plus years. I mean, we are best buds. Whenever I see him, I stop everything. I want to come be around my buddy because we got so much history and so much stuff in our lives. And I don't want kids to not get that and not have that experience. Wouldn't that suck, Dave, if your daughter didn't get to fish oh my with God. us all those years? Every, every single one of my kids has learned to fish. Uh, my daughter learned to fish under David, actually, <laughs> on the seahorse. And, uh, you know, yeah, I've, I've pushed all five of them to, to fish. And we've done saltwater. We've done freshwater. We've done fly fishing. We've done kokanee trolling. Um, you name it, we, we've pretty much done it. You know, the thing with the whole rockfish closure, they bring it down to two reds it's not even going to be worth the fuel to go out and chase those rockfish at that point so they're going to get everybody you know that way it's, it's by attrition they're going to tear it all down and nobody's going to want to go fish because you can't keep anything i mean what's a what's the point in going rockfish fishing if you can't you know keep those, those fish tacos man Right. And it's been the stable of uh, Southern California fishing because when you can't catch any, when not, when the yellowtail aren't biting or the tuna aren't biting or the sea bass aren't biting or the halibut aren't biting, we could always resort to going and getting a, getting our 10 <coughs> fish limits of rockfish and having fish to take home and having fish to eat or having fish to give away to friends. Hey, a guy named Lonnie asked a question if we have any great story about a day that was bad fishing that turned into unbelievable catch. I don't really have a story about that. I'm sure Dave does, but the thing that we were super dialed in on back in the eighties was fishing San Clemente Island for calico bass, big calico, yeah, bass. calico bass. We didn't fish Clemente for yellowtail like everybody does nowadays. Back in those days, we fished calico bass with live mackerel pound, anywhere from a half a pound to a one pound mackerel on a six aught Senator reel with 80 pound monofilament cast it into the boiler rocks. And, uh, that was our thing. A, and you know, that a pin 99 with a 40 pound on a 540. That was the, that was the deal. 10 foot rod. And people came from all over the place to come fish with me and go do that. And Dave Burris was on the boat almost every trip. He didn't want to miss that because every... it was spectacular gang. And it was all day long. You didn't catch bass under five pounds because they can't eat the mackerel. But there was many, many days where we had, I don't even know how many 10 pounders back in those days. We didn't really understand how special it was we didn't spend a lot of time we didn't have a scale there was no scales we would just take those giant calicos we throw them all in the bait tank we'd bring them back we let them go in dana point harbor <laughs> we right at the break wall the long break wall yep. and we, we did that for for years until we found somebody got five 10 pound fish and they took them over to the jig stop and they weighed them at the jig jig stop then we stopped. We wouldn't do it anymore. There's no reason to feed somebody that's going to kill all those fish. Back in the day, though, we didn't have, there wasn't anybody telling us to throw them back. We just understood the fishery. We understood these big calico bass meant something to us, so we wouldn't kill them. And then along came all these closures, and then they told us we couldn't take the 12-inch bass anymore. We could only take 14-inch, and none of that made sense to people that fish for a living their whole lives and saw what was going on out there again. There was plenty of fish when they started this closure thing. There was plenty of fish, but they started the closure thing and I fought hard and my dad fought hard to try to keep everything open. But there were so many people that were going, it's about time they did something to the calico bass. It's about time they did because those people <coughs> suck at fishing and they couldn't catch a fish. And you could make calico bass have to be a hundred pounds to keep and never take one and you still those of you that suck at fishing you'd still suck it doesn't matter but you got to quit saying it's about time they did this it's about time they did that there's zero reason for this rockfish closure 
There's no reason in the world. Yeah, there's no science behind it. There's no reason. It's all about control, and it's all about stopping us from fishing. The calico bass, sand bass, and uh, spotted bay bass all being closed on the same day for the same reason just didn't make any sense at all. But, hey, Sean's asking a question here. You see this? See that, Dave? Yeah, I see it. I, he has a, a 10-foot-3 all-glass cow star that his uncle gave to him 40 years ago. Um, that's probably a 540. That's about the only 10-foot, you know, and over rod blanks that they had back in the day. So, yeah, that's probably a 1040 right there. One thing that those will do is they'll crush around the real seat, so be careful. <laughs> yes, they will. We've done enough. We, you and I did that enough times to understand that one. It's kind of sad because the walls weren't that thick, and you could tighten up that rod clamp if you wanted. Nowadays, they call it deckhand-style rods. Back in the day, we just thought that yep. we didn't want all that crap, The we didn't want the hype on. We didn't want the real seat. We didn't want all that. We wanted cork tape. That's all my rods were that Dave made me. Cork tape. And uh, you clamp the reel to the rod. And we put duct tape around it to build it up a little bit. <coughs> I remember. Yeah. But uh, Or heat shrink. What? We get a hold of heat shrink. We get a hold of big heat shrink. You that that and deck cord. Yeah, deck cord. We use that saner cord all the time too to build it up a little bit when you put the rod on it. But now they call them deckhand rods. You'll see them a lot on the sport boats. You'll see them a lot. Guys have them custom made for them. The deckhand style rods. But that was kind of what we wanted back in the day. And there wasn't a lot of places to go to get a bitchin' custom rod. You got if you didn't have a rod from the bent rod when we were little kids. You were kind of a booger eater. You, you, everybody wanted a rod from the Bent Rod. That was the company, and they made those sabers. I wrapped for the Bent Rod for a little while. Huh? I say I wrapped for the Bent Rod for about about five years. And, but you when took this kid. rat rod wrapping thing to a whole different level, gang. The the artistry Dave does with the fish pictures on it and the flags and the diamond wrap and the arrow wrap and all the different things you've done are just incredible. I don't know if you have, I didn't even prep it to get ready for the show. The yeah, two I rods know. that you made me and Kelly are up in the rack. It would take me a half an hour to get them down. I don't know if you have anything in there to show anybody in your, in your shop no, right behind you. No, I don't. Not, not right here. Um, but you, but if you go on the website, your saltwater guide website and look under rod building you'll see some pictures up there of, of thread weaves and i i pretty much bring my uh arts and crafts part of the rod building into thread weaves here lately um there's a lot of different uh fish that i, I weave on the rods um as far as rewraps done i don't know that you'd want to rewrap a 40 year old blank uh, the only reason being there is, is it's already got fractures in the glass. I don't think it'd turn out well if you put it back into service. So, yeah, you'd have to really look it over real, real comfort, Sean. Um, and, you know, I, I, all that decorative stuff doesn't really do a lot. <laughs> yeah, all it does is look good. Right, and it just looks really cool when you're fishing with, like, Kelly Girl. She doesn't even want to use hers because you did such a beautiful job wrapping that calico bass on her rod. She's afraid she's going to hurt it. She's like, well, that's she doesn't the use most it. beautiful thing. If she doesn't piece. use it, we won't give her another one. So <laughs> she better, you better use it. Yeah, well, we got some good videos of her catching rooster fish down here on her calico bass rod in the surf. It was pretty cool. There you go. But Sean, yeah, I knew I knew your uncle very well, and uh, sorry we lost Captain Eddie. He he was a legend in the industry. And then Lee Scott, I knew those guys very very well, and uh, yeah, I've been in this industry my whole life. So a lot of a lot of the old timers we know very well. We grew up fishing with them. We grew up talking to each other on the VHF radio. So, yeah, we knew Captain Eddie and then his good friend, Sean Morgan, his partner on the city of Seal Beach. He ended up being 
a really good friend of mine and ended up taking over my old job on the wild and sack. So I still talk to Sean a lot and, uh, yep. It's unfortunate uh-huh. we lost to Eddie, but we did. But, um, if you guys got any questions for Dave Burst about tackle or rods or anything, you know, he's, he's a, <coughs> he, he's a plethora of knowledge. If you guys are watching the show and you want to know about your rods or your reels that you have, or if you want anything, and you're not a part of our website and you haven't asked him a question on, you can always ask him right here, right now. We got him right with us right now. You can ask him. It's like uh, John Stanley saying over on the yep. website, Dave has some beautiful rods displayed. His artwork is incredible. The time he spends wrapping these rods, most people would never, ever even take that much time. There, a lot of time and energy goes into it. Let's put it that way. When you uh, set up to do a, a thread weave, you know, you got uh, roughly 100 threads running along the, the rod that you switch back and forth, you know, to, to build your, your weave. And it, it's time consuming. Just let the layout alone can take four or five hours uh, just to lay it out, not let alone weaving it. Um, you know, it, it, it's every bit of an eight hour day, probably two eight hour days by the time you. Uh, lay down a weave and, and uh, tighten it up and get it ready for uh, epoxy. Uh, there's a lot to it. I mean, there is a lot to it. And as far as what will work, a weave is just to look at, okay? Black on black works great for fishing rod, uh, just so you guys understand. It's a, a lot of a lot of more goes into a fishing rod than everybody thinks. There is you know, components, the rod blanks, the handle types, those are all things that alter the way a rod will work. So, you know, you got to, if you really want to talk rods with me, I'm happy to talk to you about it. Just hit me up on the uh, on the, the website there, your saltwater guide, and uh, we'll get a conversation going. I'll give you a call and we'll sit back and discuss it. Um you know, and, and that's it. Every Everybody's individual about what they want in the way of a fishing rod. And I guarantee you I've tried it. Okay? There isn't much people can come up with that I haven't tried. Um, and we're talking from the newest uh, UC rod blank all the way down to the old Sabres. I've tried it. Yeah, you took it to a whole different level with your uh, with your artistry, though, if you will, because Dave used to make me rods black rods with black wrap and it would it just had his initials on it and it would say what rod it was and i always knew where my rods were on the boat because mine were black on black and there wasn't any there was no doubt those were my rods and we could see them walking off the boat a mile away and unfortunately people like to accidentally grab my rods and take them home with them i'd caught them in the parking lot many times and i'd be like wait a minute all your rods are yellow and now you have my black rod and you didn't know it was mine, huh? That's pretty strange. And then, and then we then, moved over to putting a piece of purple on yours. <laughs> yeah, that was that was my deal, though. Purple and black, purple and black. All my rods custom wrap, purple and black. Hey, Tim Ogilvy has a great question, Dave. And I already know the answer to this, but uh, you make freshwater rods? Uh-oh, we lost Dave. You just froze up, buddy. You're just frozen. I'm froze up. I don't know what happened. It's hit. Yeah, they're oh, back. You're back. Okay. Yes, you're I, back. I make freshwater rods. I was uh, the uh, rod wrapping instructor for Fresno Fly Fishers for conservation there for about seven years. And uh, I made everything from coconut rods to uh, fly rods, including a Tom King cane rod. So, yes, I've built, built my own blanks before. So that's an interesting proposition out of bamboo uh a lot of fun a lot of fun and all that and my opinion on spiral wrapping a rod well it has its place would i use it on a live bait live bait boat no (laughs) but it has its place uh yeah that's about it john (laughs) yeah i I I'm not using one, John, ever, not even for fun. Not, oh, here, try this. No, thank you. But, um, Lonnie, I got a great story about something that we learned 
during the great Barracuda um, migrations that would come into Southern California and they, the Barracuda would come off the point at Dana point. And uh, we started to figure this thing out because people with the rental rods would get a backlash in these Barracuda bites and you would go and help them pick the backlash out. And the, the lure that they were using would sink down 150, 200 feet underneath the schools of Barracuda. And we'd hang these big King salmon. And we started to figure out that the King salmon were following the Barracuda back in the day. And I'm sure it would happen today. I think the number one reason why we don't see the Barracuda in Southern California, like we did when Dave and I were growing up is because of that, that animal. The California sea lion doesn't allow the, yep. the Barracuda schools to come into Southern California and spawn in the kelp like they used to. Because to a sea lion, a barracuda is like a big piece of spaghetti. And now that we've overpopulated the California coastline with the worst animal on the planet, the sea lion, we've allowed that animal to overpopulate and just wipe out species. They're wiping out full, they're wiping out salmon populations up in Oregon, Alaska, Central and, and Northern California and Washington. The California sea lions wiping out the salmon and, uh, they're wiped out the barracuda migration. But in the day, we used to have that barracuda migrate and the king salmon would follow them underneath. And they would, it was just a fishery that we didn't know existed. And that was probably the coolest thing that we discovered. And then we could start targeting them. Those of us that worked on the boats when the barracuda were biting, we would slide a bait down below the cuda. Try to get it down as fast as you can, two, three hundred feet down underneath of them. And then you'd get a big salmon. It was pretty incredible fishery and that was happening in the 80s and early 90s it was insane but you're not going to ever experience that gang i'm sorry it's just not going to ever happen again because of the california sea lion just like when we had uh i can't even remember who, oh benny florentino friday when he was on the show talking about barges and the fishing off the barges when we were kids that can never happen again that just can't happen again because we decided that the California sea lions yeah. are more important than human beings. So they're the most important. There's two things that are super important. Non-citizens in California and the sea lions. Those are the two most important things in California right now. Non-citizens, non-tax paying citizens and the California sea lion. And then after that, nothing else matters in California. And uh, that's why we're not going to see the great Barracuda migrations anymore, gang. I'm sorry to be honest, but I all I got is my honesty. I just got to be honest. Here's something for you to think about, David. All these scientific things that have anything to do with a sea lion take every other animal into the equation, but they do not take the human animal into the equation. Now, if they reset everything and took the human animal as some predator of the sea lion into a, the equation, mm -hmm. everything would work out okay. Yeah, I think so. I think if you if you just tried to regulate the population of the sea lion, that would help tremendously too. And I don't say kill them all, but spade and neuter them when you watch when they watch up on the beach and they're sick. Absolutely, we, we do it to cats and dogs. We do it to cats and dogs all day. Best idea I've ever heard of. You said that uh, you know about six months ago we were talking. You said so, the same thing. And the more I think about it, I think that is absolute spot on i mean if they're going to blow the money to save them you know while they're doing it spay and neuter them yeah it's the only thing that really makes sense it's the only way you're going to slow down the population but it's unfortunately that's another thing that's never going to happen that's another thing that's never going to happen in california they just i don't know there's too many people but i i read an article that oregon's allowing the uh Indians to start to hunt the sea lions because they're wiping out. They don't, they don't have salmon to sustain their, their families up there anymore right. because of the California sea lions. So I don't Some know. I got, a, I got a little bit of Indian in me. If we started to look back at my lineage you know, maybe <laughs> I could go up there and help them out in Oregon, I'd be more than happy to volunteer. You know, if, if on the Columbia river, you look at the, the uh, salmon ladders, and there's sea lions all over them. And they're huge sea lions. They're not little guys. They're sitting there just getting fat all day long, eating salmon as they come right to the ladder. And it's just like they reach over and grab one. 
you know, it, it's just terrible. It's terrible. And I do think that PG&E up there um, did get a predation permit to shoot them. So, you know, that could be coming online, too, here this year. And that would be awesome if that did come up. That would be spectacular. Brett, I don't know why we don't brent i don't know why we don't eat the sea lion it's a it's probably a super lean meat they eat fish all day it's probably pretty dang good eating but we're not that's not even ever going to be on the table that would never happen the eskimos eat them all day long every day and they taste just like food is what i was told by the eskimos they taste like food i don't know it doesn't make any sense to me why this animal is so protected the most protective animal on the planet earth is devastating the fish stocks in the United in California and Oregon, Washington, and down here in Mexico. If you were to go to Mag Bay, where I love to fish, and look at Magdalena Island, which sets in front of Mag Bay, it's the separation of the bay, the island out in front. That thing is just you have a hard time even seeing sand on the beaches as you drive by. It's solid sea lions, hundreds of thousands of sea lions in Mexico, Mag Bay, and now they're starting to swim inside the bay. And like I said, up there in Sacramento, in Oregon, and Washington, when they get in the Columbia River and they get up the Columbia River up to where it turns into freshwater and you got those largemouth bass and those sturgeon, they're eating all those fish that have no idea that there's an animal swimming around that can eat them. We're just it's absolutely incredible. It kind of, you know what it goes along with, Dave? I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day. And he had a couple of guys on there talking about the re the repopulation of the wolves into the forest, and all these poor elk that grew up in this forest never had never seen a wolf, don't even know what a wolf is. They're sound asleep, laying in the bushes, and a pack of wolves shows up and eats them. It's just absolutely <laughs> incredible how humans want to just change the world. They don't ever think it all the way through just like on these mlp closures when they closed all these kelp beds and now they're overrun with sea urchins and there's no kelp growing anymore and they're like oh, wait a minute we might have made it well you guys closed it we were trying to tell you that's not a good thing to not harvest the sea urchins you need to harvest them so that they don't eat all the kelp hold fast it's the same thing with the wolves and it's the same thing with the sea lions those of you that don't know anything about nature you guys are putting the uh, Putting Same all the, for the deer deer population. You know, if there weren't hunters to call the deer population, they'd be dead. There wouldn't be any deer. So, you know, it, it, in moderation, that's the way things were designed. Lonnie, the the best time, and I talked with Frank Lepresti and we were we were on a show together. Right now is probably the best time as fishermen. We've never seen this bluefin in our waters like we have now. We've never seen this. We've never seen the population of calico bass at Catalina and San Clemente Island so prevalent, so dominant, and so good. And the yellowtail migrations that we've had the last few years and the Dorado fishing that we've had in Southern California, we've never <coughs> witnessed any of this in our lifetime. It, it never happened. And I've only been fishing for a living since 74 and it never happened. What's happening right now. And we just lost my father two years ago, but he would say, these are the good old days. 1957. My father tells a story on the, uh, on my pot, on, on my website about how in 57, the kelp beds went from the Coronado islands to San Francisco without a break in them anywhere. And in the middle of the summer in 57, you couldn't catch a calico bass the size of your, well, he said it's something else, but I'll say the size of your index finger. You couldn't catch one anywhere. Fishing was horrible. They were catching Tom cod to settle the jackpot. So when yeah. you look back at, and go, well, it's not like the old days. Well, thank God, because everything's cyclical. And that's the biggest problem we have is no one wants to wait five minutes to see what's going to happen. If it's not exactly like it was yesterday, they say it's the end of the world. Global warming, climate change, acid rain, out of gasoline, all these silly things that they try to scare the living bejesus out of you about. 
I don't know about you, but if you go to the San Clemente Pier and you look at the water on the piling and how far up it goes, it's still going up the same distance on the piling that it went up to in 1983. So if that's true that the water rising, well, it ain't rising where we live. And it's in Newport Beach. The, the whole town isn't flooded. All Balboa Island isn't flooded. So you got to remember what you're listening to. These are the good old days right now. You've never seen fishing like this. Two years ago, that Dorado bite was the most incredible thing we'd ever seen in the history of fishing. So right now is the good old days. Yeah, there were cycles where we had fun sand bass fishing and we had fun albacore fishing. We had this, we had that. But nothing as consistent as it's been since 2015. It's just year after year. This bluefin tuna has absolutely saved the Southern California sport fishing industry. So these are the good old days, Lonnie. These are the good old days. Lonnie wanted, I think they wanted to know, David, when, when was our favorite time fishing? You know, it, it's uh, what was our favorite era or time span fishing? And, you know, I, I've got to say, oh, the, the mid 80s were, were pretty awesome and we had a lot of fun uh, with that El Nino back in 83 we had you know the the yellow fin and uh, we had a good time I mean we really had a good time I had my boat you ran the boats it, it all worked it was it was fun uh, I can also say when we were kids you know on the patrician, San Clemente Island catching bluefin tuna on 12 pound. Yeah, th those were fun times too. So it, it's really kind of, a, you know, there, there was a bunch of different times that we had a really good time. Uh, the first bass tournament out of Dana Point Harbor that we were on, we did the team thing and we beat them and we won. Uh, that was a fun time. Uh, still got the pictures from that. Uh yeah, there, there's just so many. It's it's hard to just put your finger on one, Lonnie. Sorry, but uh, there's been a bunch. Yeah, and like John Stanley said, the best thing for island fishermen and uh, local fishermen is the bluefin thing because it leaves so much for us to fish for. Why everybody's out chasing bluefin all day? You know, I think all the experts happened. are out there now. <laughs> Same thing happened with Alan Watson and, and fishing Catalina and dialing in on that white sea bass. Why everybody was out offshore fishing albacore day, year after year. Alan Watson was just dissecting Catalina and just figuring it out. And there isn't a better white sea bass fisherman on the planet. Mark Wish. He's, he's all, the man. Us, yeah. We were over there doing that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it, was, it was phenomenal time back then. You know, I mean. Yeah, I, I just can't wait to see what's going to happen when the bluefin finally go away again. Everybody's going to be, there's going to be a lot of two-speeds for sale. Oh, a lot of two-speeds for sale. A uh, whole bunch of equipment that nobody's ever going to use again. Uh, it, it's going to be amazing, you know. It, it's better off you learn how to calico bass fish and enjoy it. And maybe expand that to yellowtail and, and white sea bass. Beyond that, I, I everything else is just a, like a Hershey Kiss sitting on top, you know. Yeah, Lonnie has another great question. Something that I missed that was really predominant back in the day was the sand bass migration. The sand bass migration that would come into California was absolutely incredible. It was such an epic time, and it would last from like the middle of July until September. And it would be day in and day out going out there. And this will be hard for a lot of you to wrap your head around. But we were I would catch 600. And, and it wasn't one boat. It was all the boats. We'd catch 600 sand bass on the morning trip, 600 sand bass on the afternoon trip, and another 600 sand bass on the twilight, day in and day out. And there wasn't one boat doing it. There were tons of – it was – we didn't – Something that people do. Oh, you guys caught on. No, 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 no. We barely scratched the surface. We barely, these fish would come and go every year and they'd go back into Mexico. And if you go down to Mag Bay and you fish outside Mag Bay in the mud, you find zillions and zillions of sand bass. It's all cyclical. What, what happened? The current changed, the water changed, things changed. It brought in all the bluefin. Everything changed. 
But that sand bass fishery was such a phenomenal fishery because in the middle of it, you had barracuda, you had bonita. If you didn't want to catch all that stuff, you just fished a live mackerel in the middle of the sand bass bite. You caught yellowtail and they were swimming around. A lot of people couldn't catch them, Lonnie, because the sand bass were so thick, you couldn't get a bait through them. But if you threw out a one pound mackerel, that would get you away from all that. You'd either catch like a 10 pound sand bass or a 12 pound barracuda or a yellowtail. And it was a fun time. And that kind of ended in the mid nineties. And I don't know if it had anything to do with the anchovy disappearing and going offshore back in those days, there was a lot of food on the bottom, a lot of razor clams, a lot of that stuff in the mud and the flats. And this fish would come up every year and uh, it would just be the most incredible thing you've ever seen. The sand bass migration and they would bite from, Santa Monica Bay all the way down to the Mexican border and in Tijuana flats and all this stuff. And it'll come back again. I don't know if we'll be allowed to fish anymore when it comes back, but it'll come back. It'll come back. It'll be a cyclical thing, just like the bluefin. And we'll see what happens. Yeah, you know, the sand bass were fun. You know, those were that was a fun fishery. I, uh, that, a lot a lot of stuff happened when that when that sand bass came in. In uh, you know late spring, a lot of a lot of it was like it kicked off everything you know surface wise. Uh, yeah, it was a good time. It was a phenomenal fishery, I mean, but there isn't any bad fishery. I just love to fish, and if you do too, and like we talk about on my series on the website about the artificial reefs, the artificial reefs, which is a tragedy because they closed areas in the MLP that have the artificial reefs in them. And those artificial reefs were built with our fishing license money for us, by us. And then they closed them in the MLPs, which we fought and talked and meeting after meeting. And it didn't make sense because they wouldn't even be there. And they want to protect the structure that we built with our money from the fishing licenses. But I talk about it on the website a lot because that is a fishery that's year round. And John Stanley and Darren and Tim Ogilvy, those guys, if you look at the community on our website, those guys are fishing those artificial reefs all the time. Why? Because they're catching 40, 50, 60 fish a person per day there, Dave. It's just incredible. There's so yeah. much cool shit. There's hey, Lonnie, so much to do if you learn how to fish. Lonnie, here's one. Here's an answer to that, better answer to that question. What prominent fish would you catch? How about fishing off Laguna? Fishing off Laguna, I mean, if that comes back around, you know, that is really important to me. Uh, David, too, I know uh, we spent a lot of time fishing off Laguna. All those rocks, those boilers, phenomenal calico bass fishing if you know how to do it. It's a per it was a prolific fishery. It was one of the most beautiful places to fish in California. They're never going to let us go there again. If you read the bylaws of the MLPs, just so y'all understand, because I asked the question, I was already featured in the LA Times and the and all over the news channels when I stood up in the middle of the meeting and I asked the question. I said, we're all here on our own time. And you look at that table and everybody on that table is getting paid. Those of us that are here on our own time are only here for one reason, to ask you, are you going to open up the MLPs again? And they, the, the, I put a guy on in the corner, I cornered him, got him in the spot, and he had to answer the question. He said, as long as there's structure in the MLPs, we'll never open them again. So the only way they'll ever open them is all the rocks disappear. So if that doesn't tell you the truth, nothing will, gang. Those rocks are never going to disappear. The MLPs will never be open in our, ever again. They're just never going to open them again. That's the way it is. When they close something, they never open it again. And everyone's all excited that they opened up 600, 800 feet of water. Well, that's ridiculous to get excited about a fish that lives in that water. You're not allowed to keep anyway. And who wants to drop two hooks down 800 feet to catch two fish that you're not allowed to keep? It's just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Obviously, people that have never done it before. You know, you start throwing a five-pound sash weight and you start doing that stuff. And uh, it, no, it's not fun. Electric reel is the only way to be fun. Right. And Jeanette, that's a perfect 
question. And Wayne Cota is going to be on the show on Friday, and you're going to find out, and everybody's going to find out that it is going to be a requirement. It is going to be a requirement for anybody that's fishing rockfish. You're get, it's going to be a requirement to have a descending device. If it's going to go into effect on the 1st of April, I find that highly unlikely because they haven't had anybody time to get those. But if it'll you be. You should have one effect. anyways. Yeah, but it'll be in effect before the end of this year, I guarantee you. The only way we're going to get to fish in those areas is if we have a descending device. And if you go on any sport boats, they all have them. It's unfortunate they have you have to take one of your deckhands and his whole job why everyone else is working double time is he's just there to descend fish all day every day but it's the only way we can keep it open we have to we have to show a great front we have to show everybody that we are the conservative and we tried to get in front of this two years ago before anybody even talked about all this stuff we were throwing back the canaries and we were throwing back the copper rockfish and we were using the descending devices. And uh, Wayne will talk all about this on Friday, gang. It'll be a great show Friday. Make sure you, sh like I said, share this across Facebook and Instagram or uh, Facebook and, and YouTube. Make sure everyone knows Wayne's coming on the show to answer all the big questions on Friday. It's going to be a great show and I'm happy to have him because we all want to know what these regulations mean for us. And we all want to know what we're coming into next. And those of you that are part of CCA, you get the news newsletters. Those of you that aren't on Friday, you're going to find out why we all need to be a part of CCA. Dave, we've already gone over. I know it's hard to believe, but we've already gone over an hour. Most people have to get back to work. I want to thank you for being on the show with me today. Tell everybody you what you got. What you got going on on the website so they can go over there and chit chat with you about rods? Well, hey, you know, I, we're building, uh, uh, putting up pictures and asking questions for people, and and uh, hopefully everybody come over there and answer some of the questions. That way, I get an idea of what everybody's using, and we can have discussions about it. Uh, if you think you already have the perfect setup, I can guarantee you don't. So. You know, there's there's a lot to custom fishing rods that can be uh, can be changed uh, compared to what you can buy off the shelf. So hey, just uh, you know, hit me up and talk to me about it. And, and Dave, thank you, thank, David. Thank you very much for being on the show with me today. It's always a pleasure to talk with you and hang out with you. I love you very very much. You're one of my close personal best buddies in the whole world, and I I uh, I, I know it sucks to be sitting there where you're at. The worst thing that Dave's phenomenal outdoorsman, big time hunter, fisherman, rod builder, one of the best mechanics on the planet Earth. He had a tragic accident. You guys are watching, seeing him breathe with his oxygen right there. A car fell off a lift on a Bronco, right? Yeah. Fell off yeah, a lift Bronco. onto my buddy. And since that day, his life has just absolutely changed but he's never changed his attitude he's always been there to help everybody he knows it sucks but gang jump over there on the website get in the community talk to dave he's going to answer all your questions don't ask me about tackling stuff because i don't know i just know you put a rod and a reel together and drop a piece of bait in the water and you catch a fish dave's going to be the technical support that's why i'm happy he's on the website I know there's a lot of people wondering what's going on, Dave. Why are you, why you got that auction? Cause the car crushed them. It crushed my buddy. It destroyed mm -hmm. a phenomenal outdoorsman gang. So Dave, love you guys. And I'm here anytime you want to bring me on. Not a problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you and very much. All, all right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's a uh, Bill Varney. Wednesday, you know, we'll be talking a little bit about these closures and politics a little bit, but we'll be talking a lot about surf fishing because it's really, really good right now. So we'll have Bill Varney with us tomorrow. Thank you everybody for watching.